Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Welcome to OEM Church. Come join the room if you're online. Join the service. Join us this afternoon. Um, send a link to a family member. Send a link to your friends as we're getting ready to worship God together. As we're getting ready to give God praise and honor that is due his name. As the deer planets for the water, so my soul longs for thee. How many people need God this afternoon? Whether you're online, right on the chat, put amen. Put your name in the chat. Let us know you're here. Uh, and let us know you're worshiping with us. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longs for thee. Father God, we bless you. We thank you for your presence among us. We thank you for this day. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for your unending love uh, toward us. We thank you for this opportunity you've given us to come and congregate, Lord, in this presence, uh, in, in this place, in your presence, Lord to give you the, the glory, to give you the honor, to give you the praise. We just want to say thank you this afternoon. We enter into Thanksgiving with thanks as our password. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being our Father. And thank you, Lord, for your, for your grace and mercy upon our lives. Continue to bless us, Lord. Continue to guide us and lead us this afternoon as we glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. this song up. We're going to bless the name of the Lord and give him the honor and praise that is due to his name. As the deer panteth for the water so my soul longs after thee you alone you alone are my says you're my friend you're my friend and you are my brother even though you are a king I love you Lord I love you more than any other so you alone
within your mighty Come say, hide me now, hide me now. you're going through the highs and the lows you can remain still right there I will be still although you're in the midst of danger you don't have to worry just be still I will be still just declare that over your life say I will be still tell your soul to be still when the oceans rise or when the oceans rise and the lift that song because oh be lifted above all other gods we lay our crown and worship you all oh, glorious god we praise your name we lay our crowns and worship you as we come into your presence this afternoon lord we humbly bow down before you we lay down all our titles we lay down all our degrees we lay down all of our accomplishments we lay down all of our crowns we lay down all of our our rewards we lay down all of our plaques and all of our titles and certifications lord and we come as humbly as we know how to praise your holy name. Oh, be lifted above all other gods. We lay our crowns and worship you. Oh, be lifted above all other
A very simple song, let's put that up.
Say hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord this afternoon. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to sing, uh, crown him Lord of all. All bring praises. Let angels prostrate for bring forth the royal dine and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal dine and crown him Lord and crown him Lord and crown him Lord crown him Lord crown him Lord crown him the King of Kings, crown him the Lord of Lords, give him the glory and honor. Father God, this afternoon we come before you. We crown you Lord over our life. We crown you as the King of Kings. We crown you as the Lord of Lords. We lay our crowns down. We lay our titles down. We lay our positions down. We lay our accomplishments down. We lay our uh, all that is uh, unto us, Lord. We lay it all down at, at your feet. And we crown you Lord of all this afternoon, Lord. We ask that you may reign in our lives. We ask that you uh, that you may reign in our lives, not just as our Savior, but as our Lord, and allow us to live for you and glow glorify your name in each and every day, in each and every way. To the glory of your name, we thank you, Father. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Right before we're seated, let's have a scripture reading in Psalm 113. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. Let's say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. It says, uh, praise the Lord. Psalm 113 says, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you his servants. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised both now and forever. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalted over all nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God and the one who sits enthroned on high, who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He sits them with princes, with the princes of his people. He settles the childless woman in her home as a happy mother of children. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You can uh, sit down as we're continuing to sing. Amen. Awesome God, how great Thou art, you are God, mighty are Your miracle. 
worship you today. Here's my worship. All of my, all of my worship. Receive, receive. silent and I will not be and I will always I will always worship if you're breathing if you're living and breathing you own the praise as long as more time. receive our worship this afternoon. Those of you that are here in the room, those of you that are online, we greet you. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Very quickly, just so we know you're here, put your name in the chat uh, right under the video. I'll put your name um, in the comments, and then one, uh, each one greet one another because we are one family. We're getting ready to hear the word of God, and we encourage you to share this video, share the link with uh, uh, your friends, your family members, your colleagues, so that they can listen to the word of God. Who's to say? Who is to say that this link that you sent them, this sermon that they're going to, to, to hear, this word of God that they're going to hear, who is to say that that's not what causes them to come to salvation, to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? So let's all do our role, our responsibility, our duty uh, of uh, what we call um, uh, digital evangelism, online evangelism. Let's share the gospel. Let's share this, uh, this, uh, uh, this video as the sermon is getting ready to preach so that people can hear the word of God. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord. Thank you for this moment of worship uh, which we had, Lord. We're asking you, Lord, prepare us to receive your word, Lord. We are ready to hear from you. Uh, prepare our hearts so that the word may fall on good soil in our lives, that it may produce good fruit and your name will be glorified. Continue to bless us, Lord. We lift up the preacher that we have for this afternoon. Uh, we ask that it be less of him and more of you, Lord, that you may speak to us this afternoon. That uh, whatever he says, we know it comes from you because you are speaking to us this afternoon. Continue to lead, lead us, Lord, and speak to us. And that this word, this living word, will be a transforming word working to change our lives through the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father. Uh, we pray you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
Now, without further ado, uh, we pass um, the mic over to Pastor Exime, who was our preacher this afternoon. God bless you. to say what God has done in our life. We're here to say where our hope is. That's where our hope is. It is, it is in Jesus. All I'm looking for, all I'm after, it's only in Jesus that I, that I can find it. So I won't be tired I won't be satisfied with very little because I know Jesus has a lot to offer. More than, I, more than I can really ask for, Jesus has it. Thank God for this afternoon and know the opportunity to present the word of God to many. For everything we do, God has a reward for every little thing that we do. Sometimes we think this is too small. That's nothing at all. Uh, we do it with negligence or we don't put our heart in what we're doing because we don't see it as a big deal. But to tell you the truth, the word says, even a glass of water that you offer to one of the servants of God, there is a merit to it, and God sees it with consideration and prepares a reward for that. And it should be, you should be happy that you one of the of the many people that have that God has working in his vine. You're one of the musicians, you're one of the worshippers, you're one of the pastor, of the evangelist, of the preacher. So you're one of that crowd of people that God has working for him. So you are in great company. <laughs> I may be a little known preacher or a little known evangelist, but I am in great company. <laughs> we have a lot of people working for God that has, they have honors and they have knowledge, they have wealth. So if I'm going to put my name in that list, that's, a, that's in itself it is an honor to be in that list with those big names. They call them general in the army of God. When you think of an evangelist like Lester Somewhere, you think as a worshiper like Novel Hayes, these people, they bring the worship to the Lord. They bring people to the Lord. They feed so many. A man who feed people on all continents, feed people in Africa, South America, America, all over the world. He has sheep carrying food to people. And God called him a servant. And God also called me a servant. <laughs> I've, I haven't done anything yet. So that makes me think, what do I desire? What will I be able to do in that great endeavor? In that great vine what is my mission? What will be my contribution? This is the question that I always ask myself. And this is the question I'm asking you this morning. What do you want to contribute? What do you want to contribute? 
What is in your heart? What is in your mind? Anything that you, that's burning inside of you that you would like to do for God? Anything that you feel like pressing? Any need that you feel like you are the one that could fulfill that need or that could feed in that void? Anything like that in your area, in your church, in your community, in your family, anywhere? You would like to put your hand and contribute in the work of God. This morning, we have several messages in our head that we would like to present to you. But we are going to focus on 1 Corinthians 12, starting from verse 7 to verse 31, on the gift of the Spirit of God. That will be our focus this morning. If you want to contribute anything in the work of God, we want to begin by telling you, you will not be able to. You will not be able to do it with your, your knowledge alone. You will not be able to do it with whatever wealth, whatever money, whatever position that you may have. You will not be able to contribute in that labor if you have to do it without the spirit of God. You're going to work too hard, and you're not going to accomplish much. So to do a lot in, a, in the very little time that you have on earth, to do a lot in this labor of love, you have to be given, you have to receive, you have to be gifted something. You have to receive some gift from God. The gifts are your weapon to fight. The gift are your weapon to work with. God doesn't send you, Jesus doesn't send you out with your bare hand and say, go make me a door, go build me a house. He doesn't send you with your bare hand. So he gives you tools. He gives you appropriate tools. Depends on what you have to accomplish, what you have to do. You receive the appropriate tools for, for it. So today, in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 7, we're going to talk about those, those tools. These are gifts that God gives you. But be before we get into that, the first verse of 1 Corinthians 12 stated, I don't want you to be ignorant of the gift of God. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1. Let me go to it. It says, Now, concerning spiritual gift, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Brethren, I would not have you ignorant. So we're going to put emphasis on that one word, ignorant. Because all throughout the Bible, God is talking about ignorance. And he, say, he said in Hosea 6, 4, Hosea 4, verse 6, he said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. So the question that I have for you this afternoon, what price are you paying today? Any consequences of your lack of knowledge, anything you're suffering because of lack of knowledge? Are you perishing because of lack of knowledge? This is the question that I'm asking you. 
anything you're missing because of your lack of, of knowledge. You may ask yourself, maybe if I have the knowledge, now I would be farther in my walk with the Lord. I would not be like a, like a beginner, like a new convert after 10 years or after 15 years or after five years of conversion or accepting Jesus. I'm still at the door. I'm still taking baby step. I'm, I'm still weak. Uh, I'm basically like a, an ancient new. I don't know how to put this word. I've been there, but I'm, I'm new. I'm old, but I'm new. You know with the word because you have no knowledge. You have no experience with God. And if you at this point, I urge you, I encourage you to seek the knowledge of God so you don't perish. To seek the knowledge of God to facilitate your endeavor in this supernatural gospel that you're trying to preach, that you're trying to live. You need knowledge. You know this gospel is supernatural. The gospel is supernatural. The master of the gospel, the head of the gospel, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is supernatural. He is not a natural man like me and you. For me, my, I have a mother, I have a father. I am a combination of two human beings. I am a combination of two natural beings, two human beings, my mother and my father. But Jesus himself is a combination of the spirit of God, is a combination of heaven and earth. Heaven intertwine with earth, and that bring you Jesus. That's supernatural. There, Jesus has no human father. Joseph is not his natural father. So Mary is mother, but where is the father? How you born just with, with a mother? So this is supernatural. Supernatural. And when you talk about stuff like that, uh, the carnal mind, the fleshly mind, cannot receive the things of God. When you start by saying, Jesus, Son of God, and some will tell you, Jesus has, uh, God has no son. Now, denying the gospel altogether from the beginning. God has no, no son. But we accept it. We accept it. By faith, Jesus is the son of God. We confess. We confess that Jesus is the son of God. We profess that Jesus is the son of oh God. So that's my firm belief. And my hope is in that Jesus is not, was not, and is not a natural man. When, I, when a natural man die, he died for good. He doesn't come back to, to life. But in Revelation 1 verse 18, Jesus is, was dead. He was physically dead. <laughs> he was dead. But now he is a, and forever and ever. So we believe in supernatural stuff. <laughs> We believe in supernatural stuff, design stuff that science can prove, design stuff that logic or philosophy or reasoning can prove. We are out of the scope of logic. We, have, we are out of the realm of philosophy. We are out. Of the, of the natural realm. We are in the supernatural. Once you start, you start talking about Jesus, you're completely in the supernatural 
in the supernatural. But you talk about it so much, at some point you take it in vain, you think, oh, this is, we just talk about it, that's all. Jesus. And you say it in vain. You say it in vain. This is blaspheming when you say the name in, in vain. Jesus. All right. Let's have a Jesus moment. It's just like it's mean nothing. People keep saying Jesus, you say Jesus. But me, when I'm saying it, I'm saying it with reverence. I'm saying the name with respect. I revere that name because I know the power is in the name. I know salvation is in the name. I know my health is in the name, and all my hope is in that name, in the name of Jesus. So I revere the name. I respect the name. And this is the name that all day, that I cherish in my heart all day. This is the name that in my soul, I'm, I'm in my car, I'm, I'm, I'm singing, singing hallelujah to the Lord. I sing hallelujah to Song that come to my head, Jesus, I worship you, Jesus. Answer me, Jesus. I call on you. You're the only one I have. You're my only hope, Jesus. Be with me. Help me in this life. All everything that I'm doing is Jesus. That's my help. And that's helped me through my life. That helped me stay healthy. I can tell you I've been through so much, I don't know how I stay healthy, but the name of Jesus. He can take you as broken as you are, and as sick as you are, as lost as you are, completely conflicted, completely hurt and broken, and Jesus can take you and make you whole. He can take you and make you wholesome, make you healthy, make you happy. He can give you back your joy. And this is the best thing that Jesus has done for me. He gave me some peace of mind. And I can smile. He gave me some peace of mind that I have some eyes that are looking down on me. I have somebody who is watching over me. I have somebody who is protecting me. All this I got in one name. And the supernatural aspect of that is you have multitude, you have many all over the world that is watching over at the same time. We receive the same protection at the same time is protecting me from an accident on Route 1 and 9, is protecting somebody in Haiti on Route 1 against the gang. Is that natural? working all over the world at the same time. <laughs> and I, I can only be in one place myself. So we can't understand the supernatural. We are now in this country, we are in democracy. Many people vote, they respect people vote. What the people, whatever the people choose, that's what when in election. So that's a form of democracy, but for God, he doesn't know the business of democracy, the business of communism or socialism. For God, he is in the theocratic business. For God, is theocracy. Theocracy was established in Israel. They rejected it. And God told Samuel, they don't reject you, they reject me because I am the king of theocracy. I want to govern earth. I, want, I give earth to men so I can control earth through men. But what did men do? Men just passed the control to the devil. So now the Bible says the whole world is under the control of the devil. The whole world. Can you believe that, that verse? The whole world. But myself, I say I'm not. 
The verse is not lying. There is no controversy there. But I said I am. I'm not under his control. I accepted Jesus as my savior. I am a member of a new nation. There is a new nation on earth. There is a nation of God on earth. Through Jesus Christ, we are part of the church. We are not part of this world. We are only in this, in this world. Isn't that supernatural? Can you really live that supernatural stuff? Can you live it by yourself? Can you actually go through that with your intelligence, with your knowledge, which is natural? Can the natural conceive the supernatural? Can the natural really apprehend or understand or comprehend the supernatural? Can that happen? You can only glimpse a small aspect of it. Apostle Paul said, we know in part, so we prophesy in, in part. So that's where I'm standing now in front of you. I know in part, and I'm prophesying in, prophesying in, in part. So I have to be humble. I have to humble myself to the Holy Spirit to work through me. Since I know I don't know much, I know very little. So I have, to, I have to humble myself so the Spirit of God do the supernatural work in me. Every Christian should humble how, themselves to the work of the Holy Spirit. And he does that to the gift that he distributes to everyone. Knowledge. So we need to have supernatural knowledge. We need to know the supernatural. Let's get into it for a minute. First Corinthians 12, verse 1. It addresses the question of knowledge. You should not be ignorant of the gift of God. We should not be ignorant of the gift of, of God. But that's so unfortunate. It's so unfortunate, my brother. It's so unfortunate, my sister, that you stay ignorant. How long you've been in that business? How long you've been in this endeavor of love, endeavor of serving God, but you're still ignorant? So you're still using your own strength, your own knowledge? You still make decision on your own? You still make your own plan? Let's read with you. First Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gift, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Hmm. My goodness. Sometimes when you discover some verse in the Bible, and you, see, you look back and you see all this trail, I walk all this trail on my own. I labor in vain, walking along for all this time. I could have reached higher ground. I could have been in a better position in my life had I known that the Spirit of God is more than willing to help me, to advance me. Instead of me trying to open doors after door, he is there to open for me. I just have to walk in them. May God bless you. So you keep in mind that you have a spirit who wants to help you. You have a helper that is sent from above. A helper sent from above to make, to give you revelation, to give you gift. To share with you the gift of God, the power of God. Verse 7. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit all. The manifestation of 
the spirit is giving to every man. If we have to put accent on something, we want to put accent on every man. There, we said every man, not every human being, every man. When I say men, I say everybody serving God. You can say it, not every human being is a man. That's something to discuss, to argue. <laughs> Without the spirit of God, you're not, a, you're not a man. The true man is the man with the spirit of, the spirit of God. Because God takes the dust and form. He made something with it. And he blow in it. He breathe in it. His spirit. That's make it a living man now. So you a human being without that. Not a man. To every man, you accepted Jesus. You one of these people that this verse is referring to. You a servant of God to Jesus Christ. This verse is referring to you, to every man, the manifestation of the spirit. And the manifestation of the spirit to benefit the body of Christ, to benefit the church, to benefit the ad advancing of the, of the gospel, to benefit the work of God, the manifestation of the spirit to every man. There are so many gifts. He said, the first gift mentioned is the gift of wisdom, followed by the gift of knowledge. So wisdom and knowledge goes hand in hand. You need wisdom to use your, na your knowledge in a better way, to use your knowledge with efficacy. You need wisdom. Otherwise, you can have a lot of knowledge, and you have nothing accomplished. You never realize sometimes in class, the best students sometimes fail. That never happened to you. You're a teacher, and you said your best student, he fails. And so knowledge doesn't get you anywhere, actually. It's the wisdom to use the knowledge. That's what will propel you to some higher ground. The wisdom to use your knowledge. So have knowledge, but on top of that, have wisdom. Give knowledge, give wisdom. Faith. To another, you give faith. To another, you give the operation of miracles. Operation of miracles. To another, you give prophecy. Another, you give diverse kind of Tongue, people who speak in tongue, they pray in tongue, they speak in tongue, they prophesy in tongue. And we could, we could do more study to elaborate on the question of tongue. Because it is a doctrinal, doctrinal point when you talk about tongues. And the doctrinal is the responsibility of the, of the pastor of the church to decide what we stand on. Where do we stand? What do we practice in our, in our congregation? But it is there in the Bible that it, it is for the benefit of the for the benefit of the church, for the benefit of the body of God. To some he gave the discerning of discernment of spirit. To give some he gave the interpretation of tongues. So we have the tongue, we have his interpretation, we have discernment of spirit. There, there are a lot of false spirit operating in this world. They're doing miracle. They're doing healing. They cast out demon. Can you see demon casting out demon? In Creole, we said, "Fair coupe, fair." Pigo de vol chasse tide, tide. Fair coupe, fair. We said, "Dear mon gain, gain mon." So you can have a bigger devil casting out a smaller. Devil. <laughs> Smaller devil. They are ranking in that kingdom. They have ranking. So if you're the pastor, you said you order me not to do something in your church, I have to obey. Is that true? 
If you say, we don't speak tongue here, I can't come and just start speaking in tongue. I am in disobedience if I do that. You got my point? So there is a hierarchy. There is an order to respect because God is not a God of disorder. He's a God of all. He's a God of order. And Apostle Paul asks you to have desire. You need to have desire. Can you do the work of God with no desire to acquire some of those gifts? And the gifts are available for every one of you who accepted Christ. But you have to have the desire to have it. If you have the desire to have it, you ask for it. And when you ask, it will be given to, to you according to the will of the Spirit. But will it be given to you if you just sit down in church? If you have nothing to do with it? Why would I give you a tool if you have no application for the tool? If you have nowhere to put the tools at work, why would you get it? Ask yourself the question. Some people say this, this realm is over. This aspect of the gospel is over. It's finished. It is done with. And myself, I say, yes. This will be over. This will be done with, not now. After the church is lifted up, after the church is out of this world, when we are with Jesus Christ, then this thing will be over. When we don't need to prophesy anymore, prophecy will be over. When we don't need to cast out demons anymore. And that power will be over. When we don't need to have wisdom and knowledge anymore. And that will be over. But as long as we are in this world, these exist. These, these are still available. And you can access them. And you can ask for them because they are there for you. They're not yet done with. And if you're going to go some places in Africa or some places in Haiti, if you don't have these, I would suggest that you don't go certain places. Stay in America where you can just preach and nothing happen. Stay in America where you can just say, I'm a Christian, and nobody will test you. And you go to Haiti, the place I, I go to, they will test you. They will test you. They have a way to test you and you may not come back. <laughs> you understand that? I'm so if you don't have those gifts, if you don't have the spirit of God working in you, the manifestation of those spirits, you can't really bear fruit. You can't really bear fruit. You may go to heaven, but you go empty-handed. You may go, you go to empty ended. You go empty ended, no crown. And you traverse. You go through this life with a lot of suffering too. You go through the life because you're a Christian. And if you ignore it, there is a lot of affliction that's going to come your way. You're going to suffer what you should never suffer. A lot of Christians, a lot of people are suffering what they should never suffer with because they are lacking in the knowledge of, of God. May God bless you. May God bless you and give you the knowledge that you need to go through life. Wow, we thank God for his word that he has brought for us this afternoon. We pray that this Living word is a transforming word, working to transform our lives. One thing that I um, wanted to encourage the people as they were leaving this morning, but I'll encourage you, is make sure you have um, your Bibles with you. Uh, it's important to have your Bibles when you're here at church so you can follow along and do 
your biblical due diligence, but it's more important for you to have your Bibles at home. I would rather you forgot your Bible at home than for you to forget your Bible at church. If you forget your Bible at church, that means you're not reading throughout the week. So <laughs> I, I prefer to have your Bibles at home so you can read the verses, so you can uh, 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 dig deeper into um, uh, the, the Word of God. And that's a, a, a great message that we heard today in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12. There's so much more to unpack there. There's so much more to, 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 to dive in um, uh, on there with a lot of, you know, um, with a lot of spiritual implications with, with our spiritual growth as well. So we have to take some time to really dive into uh, 1 Corinthians. Uh, of last week, um, last week we we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and then now this week we were in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, and I believe God did that for a reason. There's a special message for us this morning. Let's uh, go into our uh, uh, our uh, worship in our giving, our generosity segment. We're going to go into the collection of the tithing and the offerings. We're going to be generous uh, with, uh, with God and, and the work of God. We're going to open up and worship God with our wallets, with our pockets, with our finances. Uh, and uh, if you're online, there's a couple of ways for you to give. You can scan the QR code right at the bottom edge of the screen there. Or if you're on YouTube, you can click on the uh, link under the video. I believe it's the second or the third link. Click on that link. Once you click on that link, um, it, it'll take you to a very quick form uh, where you can uh, support and send uh, your, collect your tithing and offering that way as well. Right on the chat, I believe the operator is going to put that, that link on the chat as well. Click it. Right on the chat. And then if you're if you have your phones, just start a new text message to 908-509-OEM2. That's 908-509-6362. And just text the word give. Or you can text the amount that you're going to give. When the link comes, you'll uh, uh, you're 30 seconds away from completing your giving uh, uh, and generosity. Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, I love that verse. It says, I, the Lord, do not change. I, the Lord, do not change. That gives us uh, comfort. That gives us solace. Uh, that gives us uh, um, uh, where we know that no matter what circumstances we go through, no matter how things are looking, no matter if our finances are lo looking a little funny this week, if things are not looking right uh, in our lives, know that God does not change. So he says, I, the Lord, do not change. So you, O descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. And you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings, you are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your field will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Amen. Father God, we thank you, and we thank you for your love and your mercy and compassion. Thank you for this word that you've brought for us this afternoon, Lord. We pray that this word has fallen on good soil in our lives, and it will produce good fruit in our lives. To the glory of your name, we lift up, Lord, the, the collection of the offering and the tithing, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to give us a generous spirit, to help us uh, 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 to uh, be free to give and to be unburdened to give. And help us to understand that you are our provider. You are the one that gives to us. The funds that we're giving back to you comes from you, Lord. Uh, open up and continue to provide for us, continue to make ways for us, and continue to bless us in abundance. Bless whatever will be collected, Lord, and give us good stewardship of these funds in a way that glorifies your name. Continue to bless us, Lord, and to continue to allow us to, to uh, in this labor of love, to work for you and to uh, glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. While, we're, uh, while we have the, the basket for the uh, collection of the offering. Let me go over the announcements uh, for you. Uh, 
after the service, uh, we are going to have uh, we're going to have a crusade meeting after the service. If you're in the area, you can make it. Uh, we're at 953 East Grand Street right here in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Come join us as we're planning this work that God has called us to do. Mark 16, verse 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all uh, creation. That's what we're doing. Uh, and we, we want you to partner with us, collaborate with us as we push this work forward. So at 2.30, at 2.30 p.m., um, we will be doing that. We'll be having the, the crusade meeting. Um, if you're unable to make it, uh, send us a text, the same phone number, 908-509-OEM2, but write crusade on there. Let us know that you're willing to participate, you're willing to get involved, uh, um, and then we will contact you with the, the details of how to do that. We're looking for volunteers, we're looking for leaders uh, to partner with us to push this work forward. We have Sunday school, um, uh, which we have before our Creole service at 9.30 in the morning. We encourage you to participate, we encourage you to get involved uh, in that as well. Um, one thing that we don't have yet, but it came on my uh, um, came on my spirit, maybe that's something that we will plan to implement, but we're going to continue to pray on it, is a Zoom option for uh, some of the English classes so we can have that early in the morning as well. So um, hopefully that becomes a reality. So while we have the Creole classes in the morning at 930, we can have the English classes going on concurrently at the same time on Sunday morning. Uh, we have a, uh, the Young Adults Night of Worship is going to be next Sunday night. Now, the implication is next Sunday we are not going to be meeting at 1230. We're not going to be meeting at 1230. We encourage you to join our morning service and uh, join us in the Creole service, which starts at 1030 in the morning. And then uh, we will uh, reconvene at 630 in the evening for the night of worship. We encourage you, don't come alone. Bring your friends, bring your families, uh, share the invite. Uh, if you need transportation or if you need other help to get here, send us a text message. Same number, 908-509-OEM2. Uh, text the word VISIT to plan your visit. Uh, text the word VISIT to 908-509-6362. We'll, we'll figure out all the logistics with transportation, with getting you here, your guests, your family members, etc. It's going to be a great time that we're going to be spending together in worshiping God uh, on Sunday evening. Uh, at 6.30 p.m., so I encourage all of you uh, for next Sunday. There's a couple of birthdays in the month of April. Uh, particularly, we have our, our, our uh, from our worship team, Sister Kareen, that's celebrating this month. We pray that God may continue to bless you all the other April birthdays. If your uh, uh, birthday's in April, send us a message. Let us know, and we'll add you to the prayer that we do for the people for the birthdays of April. Let us stand up so we can pray together. Father God, we thank you for this, day, for this day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy and your compassion. We thank you, Lord, uh, for the sacrifice of the cross. We thank you for uh, ransoming us, and thank you for giving your life, uh, giving us Jesus Christ to die for our sins, to save us, Lord. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you're not just our Savior, but you are the Lord of our lives, that you may reign and guide us uh, each and every day. Lord, we pray that you equip us with the tools to do your work, Give us ambition, Lord. Give us, uh, help us to want to do more for you. Help each and every one of us. Give us the desire to want to accomplish more for you, Lord. And we pray that you may uh, train us and equip us uh, with everything we need for your good work. To the glory of your name. Continue to bless us, Lord, and keep us. Uh, we pray you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's lift up our hands for the benediction. May the God of all peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip us with everything good for doing his will. For To him be the glory and power and honor forever. Amen. May God bless you all. Amen. We have... For those of you staying for the meeting, we have refreshments. We have um, brunch. It's breakfast, but we'll call it brunch now. Uh, off to the side there. Coffee, bagels, etc.